Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist. And today we are going to learn about a new uh, way of embedding the controls inside a particular object inside Tosca. And there are different ways of doing this. Uh, we'll see how you can embed controls inside a table object, but this could be applied to any other object type uh, when you are working with a web application. Okay. So the scenario which I picked is this obstacle course from Tricentis. And here you can see this is a table with different rows and columns. And then there is a control here, a button, which is inside this particular table. And it has got this for each and every row, right? So what I want to do here is I want to click on this go for it button in the first row, okay? Or maybe any row uh, I like, right? So this is an embedded control inside this table and I want to click on this, okay? So it's not that you can do it straight away by just scanning it and then clicking on it because all these controls are similar, right? So they will have the same properties. So there has to be a way of clicking just this particular button. Now we know there are different ways of doing it. You can use index, you can use the table steering methods to click on this particular button, right? But we'll see uh, how the control is basically separated from the table controls. And that is where we want to embed this control uh, into the module or into the table, okay, inside the module. So let's see how we can do this. So first, uh, let me go ahead and scan this particular module and then let me explain uh, you how this embed control looks like. So automatically, uh, Tosca is not going to add it as an embedded control, okay? So uh, it will show it as a separate control. So if you see here uh, in this table, so this is the table which contains all the different rows and rows and columns, right? And we need to select this table, okay? To access all these controls. And then you will see these links, which is go for it. Right, so all these links are for different rows. And if I increase this filtered items, you can see it properly, okay? So you can see now the TR, which is the table row, has got the go for it link, right? But uh, it's not best practice to directly select the table row, okay, and then select the go for it. Still, it, it won't be a embedded control, okay? So for now, uh, if I go ahead and maybe select this first link, okay? So Tosca will say that it is not a unique control, right? So that's fine. Um, obviously I can change some technical properties to make it unique or use the index, right? But we don't want to go uh, in that path. We want to see a different way of doing this. Okay, so for now, um, I'm going to save this module, okay? And let's go back here. And this is our module, right? So this is the obstacle uh, list module. And let me rename this. And here you will see that uh, this is the table and it has got the rows and columns, but the link is not uh, inside that particular row, okay? So when I go ahead and I created a test case folder and a test case, okay, just for uh, this demo, and if I go ahead and add this module here, um, so you will see that it's not inside the particular cell, right? So that should be the ideal way because it's an embedded control. Inside each row, this particular link is present, right? So if I have selected the first link and I go ahead and click on this or perform the click method, if I execute this, uh, it's going to fail, okay? And the reason is pretty simple. There are multiple controls with the same properties. So it's not going to uh, click on a particular uh, button because it's not able to uniquely identify it, okay? So we'll see that um, error uh, once this test case fails. And then we'll see um, how we can basically fix this error, okay? So now you can see the test case has failed and it will also show the log info as more than one control found for this action, go for it. And that's why it was not able to click on this, okay? So that was on expected lines, okay? It was supposed to fail, but let's now see how we can fix this easily, okay? 
So how we can make this go for it link as an embedded control for that particular row so that we can steer that particular control from the table row itself, okay? So for that, I'm going back to my module here, you can see, and I want this particular link inside this particular cell, right? Because uh, it's inside the first row you can see, and inside this is the cell, okay, table cell. So uh, what you can do is to make it an embedded control, you can just drag this particular link inside and put it inside this cell, okay? So now if you see uh, the table, the row, and then inside the cell, we have got the link. So it has become now an embedded control inside the table row itself, okay? So now if I go ahead and delete this and again drag this module into the test case. So now if I go into the test case, you will see that it has got this particular cell. Okay, inside the cell, we have got the control. And now uh, I can go ahead and click on it, but first I will select the first row and then I will select the respective cell. So this is the action cell, okay, which contains this particular link. And here I'm going to change it to select, okay, and then I'm going to click on it. So this way you can uh, embed a control inside a particular table cell and then perform the necessary operation, okay? So now if I go ahead and run this, this time it will be able to click on that particular link inside the table cell, okay? So as you can see, it has clicked on the first obstacle, go for it, and it has reached this page, right? So this was the first way of doing this, just uh, dragging the control inside the particular cell or particular object, right? So you can embed that particular control uh, using this way. The other way around is, so say for example, uh, we don't have this particular control. We have not scanned it, right? So last time uh, we scanned this explicitly, this particular control. But if I go ahead and remove this, Okay, and uh, right now I've just got a table which I have scanned, okay, on this particular page. So now what we can do is we can create our own embedded control inside a particular table row cell. Okay, so if I go inside this table row and then cell, I right click on it and then you go into this three ellipses, expand this, and then you will see here there are different controls, okay. Now, depending on what type of control you want to create, you can select that particular control, okay? So for me, uh, that particular control is a link. So I'll be clicking on this create embedded link control, okay? And then um, I can put a name here, say I put it go, okay? Now this is going to work because uh, there is only single uh, link in this particular table row, okay? But if there are multiple uh, multiple controls, like two links or two buttons, then um, if you don't add any particular properties, right, technical properties for this particular control which you have created, uh, it won't work. So everything will have the same properties. So it's pretty ideal uh, and a best practice. So whenever you are creating an embedded control, you should be creating or adding uh, new technical properties for it, at least the ones you know, okay? So for that, um, again, uh, we can go to the properties here, okay? And uh, right click on this, again, go to that three ellipses and expand it. And there you will find create technical ID parameter, okay? So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to add some technical properties, right? So here, uh, I know that the tag value is A because it is a link, okay? And then um, I can add another one, although it's optional, I can add the inner text, okay? And for this, I know it is the text, go for it. Okay, so this way, I can make sure that uh, this particular link is getting identified by Tosca using these technical properties which I have added. 
okay so if you have got multiple controls which have got the same properties and you are adding another embedded control uh, which is pretty similar then try to uh, make it unique using this additional technical properties which you can add um, on your control okay so even without scanning a particular control i can add my own embedded control and then i can use it inside my test case okay so now that we have added uh, the embedded control and the additional technical properties let's go ahead and add this module into the test case and let's see if it can still work the same way okay so we'll steer it in a similar way uh, we'll select the first row uh, we'll select the cell which is action uh, we'll change the action mode to select and then uh, for go you need to type uh, the click method okay so by default you won't get it because it is a custom embedded control so we need to type the value as click okay uh, let's go ahead and execute this now and you can see that uh, it is still clicking on the first row for that particular link which is go for it okay so this way you can add your own custom embedded control into a particular um, table row cell or basically any other uh, object type which you are currently working on okay so I've shown you both the ways. Uh, one is the simple way, uh, you scan it and then you drag it and drop it. And the other way is you don't even need to scan that particular control. You can add a custom control uh, as an embedded control into that particular object, okay? So that's all for this video. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it uh, and you learned something new today. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, do subscribe uh, as we are coming up with lots of more interesting videos on Tosca and many other different automation tools. So until the next video, keep watching and keep learning Tosca.